Lauren, thanks for joining us. You're, of course, one of the newest members of the WADA Athlete Committee. What does it mean to be on board with this group of athletes? It is such an honor and a privilege to be uh, chosen to be a part of this committee. I think that it's a pretty rigorous process to, to choose an athlete, and they're pretty strategic about it. So for them to find me worthy of doing my part to help clean up the sport was really an honor and a privilege, and I look forward to doing my part too. You mentioned back at the ADO Symposium in March the importance of athletes speaking up and being, being vocal, but you also gave a, an example of an experience you had where perhaps you didn't want your name leaked in the media that you'd been uh, reporting you know, bad, bad practice um, in sport. Tell us a little bit about that experience and your views on, on why athletes need to speak up. I think it's a, a really scary thing for the athlete in the moment, you know, you always say if something goes wrong, I'm go of course I'm going to tell. Like, you know, as you're when you're an advocate for clean sport, you think that it would just be so easy to just get out there and, and say it and do it because it's the right thing. But uh, it was a pretty nerve wracking experience. Yet and still, I'm very excited to have done the right thing, gotten it out there, done my part to contribute to to the cleaning up of the sport and making sure that I told everything that I knew in a, in a way that it was going to help uh, them find the right people and, and get the wrong people out of the sport. You mentioned the athlete entourage as a, as a former athlete yourself. You must be aware of the, the influence they can have, both good and bad. What, uh, what warning signs would you need to look out for and what do you need to be wary of? I think as it pertains to medical staff, you should, you should look for buzzwords. You know, it's important for an athlete to, to educate themselves and know that HGH is a bad thing, testosterone is a bad thing, uh, you know, something that's going to give you long-lasting endurance. Anything that sounds too good to be true is probably too good to be true. And so don't just take the word of somebody because they went to medical school or even the word doctor. I, that's a way that I kind of got, you know, I, I went to a guy thinking that he was a doctor and it turns out he was a chiropractor. And of course, they're allowed to call themselves doctor, but he was not a medical medical doctor as I was thinking. So really look for little buzzwords and, and different things and, and don't be afraid to run the other direction. Your career is not worth risking. Let's look at your career. You've got quite a story, haven't you, really? You competed in track and field. You moved on to, on to bobsleigh. Uh, that's quite rare in itself. In fact, I think you did, if I'm right, what no other US woman has done in becoming a medal winner at both a summer and a winter Olympic Games. How did you make that transition? The transition for me was amazing, from track and field into bobsled. Just the, the stars had to align properly. I ran into Lolo Jones in the airport. I just simply asked the question about, oh, I, I read about you in the paper. How's that bobsled thing? Where'd you find that? And she said, Lauren, you should give it a try. They, they need powerful athletes. It's just as simple as being powerful enough to push the sled initially, and they'll teach you everything else you need to know. And off I went a month later, and six months later, I was at the Olympic Games. It was such a wonderful experience and such a, a really good time in my life to learn about teamwork. And you think you kind of have discovered all these things and you're well-rounded after 10 years in sports, but I learned so much in that six months. Looking ahead to your, your post-sport career, you've got strong qualifications away from the sporting arena. I think an MBA, a BSc in finance. How important do you think it is for athletes to really think ahead about what they're going to do when they hang up their boots? It is incredibly important for athletes to think ahead and plan ahead and I'm you know, fortunate enough that I can't retire from life from the amount of money I made in, in the sports that I competed in, but I did give myself a, a one or two year leeway to really navigate around and see what it is that I am passionate about, whereas some people in sport and they really need the next paycheck and they just dive into the first thing and they end up unhappy. Uh, if you have the opportunity to, to plan accordingly, it could really, really help you uh, transition a, a lot better and with a lot less stress. Supplements, there's growing concern over the use of supplements and athletes leaning towards them in, in current day sport. What advice would you, you give to an, to an athlete choosing that route? And it's hard for me to give advice on supplements because I didn't use any supplements for the duration of my career. Uh, I'll tell the story of I was getting uh, multivitamin and omega-3 from our coach and every time the other athletes needed it, I said I also needed it and I opened my cupboard one day <laughs> shortly after the games in 2004 and I had a cupboard full of unused uh, supplements and I said obviously these don't work because <laughs> I just got a silver medal and I didn't use any of them and that was the end of it. I didn't think twice about it anymore. I've always wanted to be naturally the best me that I could be. and. 
I would, I would challenge athletes to take responsibility for their health, uh, take responsibility for them, the food that they put in their system, and just like you compete full time, make this a, a part of your training and your regimen to, to get the right food and the right nutrition into your body, and that can really enhance the way that you compete in sport. That's good advice to have. Lauren Williams, thank you very much. Thank you.